So what was your perception of Bolivian cuisine before you moved here? I had no idea about Bolivian cuisine. I'm going to be very honest. Um, it was, uh, of course, Peru was coming up, but uh, by the time we left Denmark, it was still very much about the Nordic movement and the new generation of Norwegian, Danish, Swedish chef coming up. So when we came here, it was kind of a, let's figure out what this is about. So. And what, I mean, what have you figured out? What is it about? <laughs> it's, a, it's about a lot of flavor. It's about a grandmother kitchen traditions. Um, a lot of uh, labor, you know, there's a lot of empanadas that's folded really beautifully. There's a lot of uh, traditions of eating what they've always eaten. And, you know, it's not, it's still, you know, on the, on the edge of, of finding this new Bolivian revolution. Um, so, so it's still very traditional. And what are the traditional cooking methods that people use there? Uh, there's a lot of soups, of course, because it's the way we've always done all over the world that you have a little bit of this and this and this and you put it in a bowl and you leave it and then you go to work and you come back um, and since there's still a lot of families living in in the countryside here it's uh, it's still the tradition that uh, you put something over in the morning and then you come back and it's ready at, in the afternoon um, of course a lot of Bolivia is so diverse uh, so 20 minutes from here you're in Beni and you eat uh, uh, surubi or paichi, these huge Amazonic fish wrapped in banana leaves and cooked over open fire and then you go 20 minutes from here to the Altiplano and then you have uh, freshly dug up potatoes with uh, with homemade cheese. So the, the, it's completely different depending on where you are in the country but, but very much each region you know preserves the traditions very well. And what are the key ingredients or flavors that you find in Bolivia? There's a lot of ahi, uh, the chilies, either sweet or, you know, very, it's not the spicy uh, Asian chili that we most, you know, mostly connect chili with, uh, but a lot of deep flavors, a lot of uh, reductions, uh, you have a lot of lamb reductions, for example, soup uh, that you don't meet a lot in Europe, these very heavy flavors, um, so it's very, uh, it's very uh, full flavored kitchen. And if someone's never tasted Bolivian cuisine before, can you describe some of the influences or similarities that you might find with other regional cuisines? Um, I think, and this is this is mostly talking from from La Paz, Sucre, this this area around here, um, because as I'm saying, if you go to the jungle, it's completely different. Um, but if we think of of curry dishes, for example, that you have something very uh, you know, you have a lot of flavor, you have a lot of presence of, of, of this one element, um, and then you can pretty much add whatever you want, if it's lamb or if it's beef or if it's pork or chicken or whatever, um, but the dominating part would be the, the ahi, for example. Really lovely. And what is the kind of the concept that Gusto really works on? How is the restaurant's concept in the Bolivian cuisine? We've been uh, interpreted in a lot of ways, uh, but what we what we always been and what we will continue being is is a is a restaurant in Bolivia, not a Bolivian restaurant, uh, with pr products 100% from here, uh, from the wine cellar to drinks to to food, uh, everything here is 100% uh, local. Uh, so we do a very very tight uh, zero kilometer policy, um, but then we. You know, cooking wise and how we prepare it and everything is 100% inspired of whatever we want. <laughs> okay, super. And what are some of your personal favorite ingredients? Because you've obviously got a lot to pick from around the country. What is the thing that really shines for you from here that you love cooking? For? There's a lot of things that, you know, it's, it's the diversity here is so ridiculous that every day we meet a new product and it's, you know, I've never experienced this. Um, the fruits I really like because they're so different from what we're used to in Europe. Um, the palm hut uh, is beautiful, silky, uh, the texture to touch it, to eat it. Um, the potatoes, the native potatoes, when you when you find them, because it's very difficult, it's still a little tabooish here. Um, uh, they want to present the big, you know, uh, kind of imported Bolivian sorts that you make either french fried with the chips, but the, the local potatoes are kind of hidden away still. Uh, but when you find them and they're pink and purple and you know beautiful, it's it's incredible. Wonderful. And obviously, Bolivia is a land of really high altitude. <laughs> what kind of, in what way do you see the altitude affecting some of the products or the produce from the country? Um, Bolivia is mostly uh, jungle, if you look at it like percentage-wise, but. Because Bolivia is often, you know, the concept of Bolivia is a lot of llamas and, and high altitude. 
uh, it's a little bit confusing. Um, I mean, some of the products that are growing here are the ones that are meant to grow here. So you have extreme altitudes for quinoa, for example, cañagua, amaranto, potatoes, um, and then all the stuff they've been able to in introduce in altitude, which is, it's funny because you see most of the same thing that grow in Denmark will grow in, in La Paz, uh, because the climate is more or less the same and the altitude is not really affecting. But where you see it is, for example, in, in when you cook, no? in, in bread making, in when you cook any starchy things, rice, potatoes, everything, it's, you know, then when you throw it in, you turn it on, you, you forget about it for 10 minutes, you come back and it's done here, it's like 40 minutes later, <laughs> what the hell is wrong with this potato, no? Um, so it's more like that than that we can, where we can see it. And obviously you get a lot of tourists that come here as well. What is their biggest misconception about the Libyan cuisine? Um, I think they expect to be in Peru. <laughs> uh, do we have ceviche, do we have, you know, it's become very uh, famous that like these one or two or three Peruvian dishes are suddenly South American dishes. Um, I think people don't know what to expect. Uh, so when unfortunately they find themselves trapped in some tourist trap with rice, potato, corn, chuño, choclo, you know, and they get the whole starchy plate and a dry piece of meat. It's very, you know, unfortunate because Bolivian cuisine is so much more than but you need to look a little bit more. Uh, you can't just walk into any place. You need to go to either an old school, classic grandmother restaurant or, or eat in the market. Most markets have really good food and you'll see people standing in long lines. Um, so I think people don't know what to expect, so they eat whatever and then they have a bad experience and then Bolivian food is bad. Yeah. And what is the most surprising, best surprise that you can find in Bolivian cuisine? Oh, there's a lot of things. Um, I think when you find these little treasures in the street food, uh, we have a place we always go in the city that has tripe, um, and it's this lady who's been selling the same thing for, I don't know, all her life, and it's this big ceramic box, and she's like scraping it off the bottom because it sticks a little bit and burns, and it's, it's super delicious, and it's less than a dollar. Um, when you find these moments, you're like, oh my god, this is better than three stars Michelin. <laughs> Perfect. And do you have one ultimate kind of Bolivian style dish and wine pairing that you'd recommend? Oof. Um, it's tricky. I'm not an expert on, on, on wine pairings, but I think wine is tricky with Bolivian food in general. Um, I would probably go for the Moscatel, go sweet with something spicy. Yeah. Perfect. Super. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>